Well, first, I want to start with South Carolina and congratulate them on a phenomenal year. To be picked out near the Barton <clears throat> and to win 13 SEC games, that's a really good team. And uh, they're well coached and uh, they got a good plan. Um, I think the thing people are wondering why we were so excited about playing. And that shouldn't be a, I don't even know if that should be a question. We, we, we try to always be excited about playing, respect our opponent. And uh, we recognize that we need to make plays on both ends of the floor. We also recognize it's been since 2019 that we won an SEC game. And that time we won four, two or three or four to uh, win the SEC tournament. So I'm proud of our kids, coaching staff did a great job of, uh, of getting us prepared. Guys had a really good week. And uh, we're looking forward to the opportunity to play Mississippi State tomorrow. All right, we'll take uh, questions for either of the student athletes. If you'll raise your hand, let's start right on the front row on the right. Justin Ferguson, Auburn Observer. Jani, uh, South Carolina went 10 of 30 at the rim against y'all today. They, they had a ton of points in the paint yesterday. I know that had to be a key for this game. What was the key to y'all's success at slowing them down, at getting downhill and, and around the basket? Uh, like you said, like yesterday's game, they scored with 50 points in the paint. And uh, we knew we can't win like that. Uh, but, you know, our front line takes pride in our defense, you know, protecting the rim. And uh, as you can see, um, on the defensive side, you know, we held our own and uh, stood our ground. Okay, let's go to the left side, second row. This is for Cheney. Uh, they got to within 35 25, and you went on a little 5 0 run yourself uh, to put them up 15. It was pretty much over after that. But just talk about those, that, that sequence for you and the rhythm you guys were in. Um, I mean, it's easy to catch rhythm when I got um, a head coach and players that always believe in me and give me confidence. So, I mean, I'm not going to say that's not nothing, but I mean, when, when they pushing me every day to be the best player I could be, um, always speaking positivity into me, I mean. At least the assistant coaches are more positive. <laughs> the coach is always not positive. All right, raise your hand if you have a question. All right, let's go to the right side on the front. Cheney, uh, last few games, you're scoring nearly you know, double-digit points a game. Just kind of what, what what's gotten into you on offense, and what do you think has been the key to this, you know, this stretch that you're on? Um, I mean, my main goal is just to improve um, game by game. Um, and I ain't going to lie, I kind of ramped up my, my work ethic. Like, I've been putting in a lot of extra more shots. I know these games right here are really important, so I, and I know my team really going to gonna need me. And I just want to be the best player I could be for them. So. Um, just trusting my work and um, trying to get better every game. Other questions for either? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back to the front row on the right. Shania, 47% uh, from deep for y'all. I know three-point shooting has been a big thing for y'all here down the, down the stretch. You hit a couple of them. Just, I mean, what is the ceiling for this team when you guys continue to shoot like this from deep? Uh, man, coach always tells us, you know, uh, now's the time to go on a run. You know, uh, Make shots. Uh, that's how you advance in the, in the tournament, in the NCAA tournament. That's how you win games. And uh, I think everybody been taking pride in what he said, you know, because we was going to do a little shooting slump uh, mid-season a little bit. So um, I just credit all my teammates, you know, for uh, being in the gym, like Cheney said, and uh, stepping up to the moment when the moment's getting big. Any question on the front row on the right? Uh, Justin Lee with the Oklahoma Auburn News. Uh, how, how did you feel like you guys go into the paint early, opened it up for the three-point shooting later. And just what did you see on the floor and kind of the run of the game? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, our pregame coach said, you know, inside out. That's what I always preach. Uh, so, you know, getting, getting inside. You know, they play one-on-one -on -one the whole game. Um, and we got guys, our front line, who, like us, who can score down there um, kind of hard. So they started digging. And, you know, we got guys like Denver Jones, Kevin, Kev, uh, Katie, um, Aiden, Trey. They all can make shots. Uh, so. It's hard to stop us when we share hand shots. Good time for one more question for either. All right, let's go to the front row in the center right here. Cheney, you guys protected the ball extremely well today. Only one turnover in the second half. Can you talk about what you guys saw out there that you know helped you to that result? Um, I could just credit our um, our point guards. I mean, they're great leaders on the off the court, and I mean, one turnover combined for the whole team is crazy, and that just is a testament to their focus and their own mindset going into these games. All right, we'll excuse the student athletes. You can return to the locker room. All right, we'll continue on with uh, Coach Pearl. Raise your hand. Let's start on the far left there on third row. Mike Lopresti, NCAA.com. More of a general question. 
you've seen a lot of conferences, a lot of basketball in your life. How would you characterize the offensive might of this conference this year? And second part of that, how well does great offense translate into the NCAA tournament? Yeah. Um, I don't know what the analytics say, um, but there are like four, four or five teams scoring on 80 or above, right? Um, you know, Tennessee and Kentucky, Alabama, just you know, incredible firepower on the offensive end. We're one of those teams that are you know scoring above 80, um, and yet we're the most athletic team in the country, and so it's physical. Uh, we defend, um, but I think that uh, I think our league is uh, is is prepared to 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 make a run in in, in March. A, a bunch a bunch of us are. I mean, you saw our Mississippi State team be the potential one seed in Tennessee start to finish. And they're, they're, they finished ninth in our league. You know, Arkansas uh, beat Duke at home, finished 10th in our league. Um, I think, I think uh, we got some really good coaches in this league. And I think, I think that's one sometimes that's a separator is that, you know, coaches sometimes how, how good they are on the offensive end sometimes can be a separator. So I think, I think some great coaching staffs in this league. All right, let's go to the center aisle, second row. Doug Amos, ESPN, The Ticket, Montgomery, and Auburn. Coach, your best teams have been great defensively. If you had to put a finger on why that is, is it fundamentals, is it scheme, is it effort? What, what, what makes Bruce Pearl team so good defensively? Well, I, think, I appreciate the comment. I don't know that I, don't know that I agree with you, but um, you've got to play with that. you got to play with effort and energy. We're committed to playing 10 guys. So when you play 10 guys, you know, look at the stat sheet with the number of guys that scored. Look at the balance. Look at all the guys that feel really good about how they're playing and the way they're contributing. And that's in that locker room. Those guys like each other. They get along with each other. They share the minutes. And that allows you to not take plays off. And so the deeper we can go in a tournament, the more of an advantage it is for us because, because of our depth and the effort energy and the unselfishness it requires to play that hard. It's why Mississippi State's won two games here. Mississippi State just got down and guarded LSU and guarded Tennessee, and that's why they've advanced. And then just kind of let Hubbard make a few shots and totally do what he does. And, you know, the rest of those guys are really good. We've had two, we had two great games against them uh, this year, so. Next question, right side, third, third row. How you doing, Coach? Jack Patterson with WRBL out of Columbus. You talked after the Georgia game that depth was going to be the key for you guys to win the SEC tournament. You had 11 different players score today. Just talk about the ability to be able to switch guys in and out and keep them fresh and keep South Carolina on their toes all game. Well, if you had told me that we'd had 10 guys score and that Jalen Williams would only have three, I'd, I may be a little concerned. But again, <laughs> you know, there would be a lot of guys in, that were second team all conference and a fifth year senior that only got two shots and they'd be all upset in that locker room. You would never even know it from Jalen Williams. He's, he's, he's excited about the winning, he doesn't care. And uh, he was happy that Cheney Johnson was able to come in there and do it, you know, what Cheney did. So um, you know, I, think, I think our front line um, is, the, and again, the depth of our front line that we have Cheney and Jalen, that we have Janai and Dylan. Makes a, makes a big factor. Um, you know, we took care of the ball. Um, South Carolina doesn't turn you over much. They don't. They, 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 in fact, they force the fewest turnovers in our league, but they're super, super solid. And I think the other thing, too, and this doesn't get enough time, it, it's about matchups. I'm not going to tell you why it's a good matchup for us and a bad matchup for them, but it just is. There's just some things about the, the way we play and the way they play that worked out, you know, works, what sort of works out for us. We fouled them too much, um, and we got to do a better job of you know, about of defending without fouling. Let's go to the back on the left side. Hey, Coach Jordan Cave when the, from the state newspaper in Columbia. Um, you mentioned the matchup part. Sorry, right here. Uh, you mentioned the, match, mentioned the matchup parts. That that's two wins against South Carolina. I think 71 points of victory. Um, why have you guys been so good against South Carolina? And is, it, is there any part of that that's tempo, or is it just, your, you know, the, the personnel? It's a great question. Honestly, it's almost like, you know, as an offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, I don't want to, I don't want to dodge the question, but in truly answering the question, it tells you where I think we're strong and where I think we're weak and where they're strong and where we're weak. And it just, it's just one of those, it's just kind of one of those things. Um, but look, South Carolina 
man to man as far as guarding one on one. They're really, really good. They guard the ball really, really well. And they do play really hard, but play physically. They play inside out basketball. We've got some size on the inside. They got the ball inside a lot. And we got some size in there with Dylan and Janai and some fouls to give that made, you know, made it hard for them to score at the rim. You know, so let's go far back on the right. Bruce, when you talk about all the offensive firepower in the league, uh, how much, and maybe across college basketball, how much is the, the eradication of the charge this year sort of been the gasoline on the offensive yeah. explosion? Yeah, it's been huge. It's been huge. I, I, um, I, I will tell you, I did not like it when it first came in with the secondary defender really couldn't come over there and take a charge. I didn't like it because the timing of the rule change. In other words, we had already recruited our roster and then all of a sudden, sometime in the summertime, we get a rule change. And, and now all of a sudden, so what's happening is it's created a little bit more one-on-one -on -one basketball and a little bit more freedom of guys being able to sort of get downhill. Now, once you get into the paint, you got to bring it because they're allowing the verticality. They're allowing the guys to be big. And, 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 and as long as they don't you know, reach down and foul, I think the rule, I think it's been a good rule. I think it has opened up the floor a little bit. Um, it's brought a lot more contact at the rim with the bigs blocking shots because they're, you know, a lot of times those guys would turn the corner and get downhill and the collisions would be out there in a the perimeter. But I, I think it's better because kids aren't just jumping in front of each other. It's been a, and it has it has increased the offenses. Okay, let's go to the far left on third row and then we'll come right back to the center in the second row. Johnny Ballpark Franks with Franks Media. So many teams with great home records this year. How important are these opportunities, not only for your squad, but the other ones that will be dancing next week on these neutral site courts? Yeah. I mean, um, we had a winning record on the road in the SEC this year. Um, that's hard to do. Um, we, 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 we had some great neutral site victories. I, it, it does translate to, I think, success in tournament play. Um, but we don't play in a neutral site at Auburn. Did you see how many people were there for Auburn? There ain't no neutral site now. That's a home court advantage for the Auburn Tigers because our fans traveled. And uh, I'm just glad they don't have to check out of the hotels tonight. Okay, let's go, let's go to the front row on the end right here. We just got time for one or two more. Yeah, Bruce, just defensively, especially around the rim, just what, what was the key for you guys to be able to slow down something? And, you know, like like Jen and I said, like they had 50 something points yesterday in the paint uh, yeah. against Arkansas. Well, we're built a little differently, you know, um, and we've got, I think, Dylan and Janai, Cheney and Jay Will are, are all older, and they're all bigger, and 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 physical, and they're and you know they're 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 willing to be physical and stuff. I mean, tomorrow in the paint, some big men down there tomorrow. On both teams, and, and, and South Carolina had it. Um, you know, um, uh, Murray Boyles is going to be a pro. He's going to be a great player. You could just see in this particular game, a, a, a guy that's in college for four years, like Janai Broom. T tonight he had the advantage, and Janai was excited about playing him because, because if you look at the last six games, Boyles is shooting 75 percent from the field in the last six games. He was one for nine tonight. And so give our front line, give our, give our, give our guys credit because he's a terrific player. Sorry, we only have time for one more question. Just take it right here on the front, in the center. Uh, Michael Giddens. We'll Warhol. give you one more, Hoke. We'll give you one more. Uh, <laughs> I yield my time to Justin. Uh, <laughs> Michael Giddens, War Report. Coach, 42 points in the paint. You talked about matchups. Um, can you talk about the importance of you know, not settling for jump shots today and what you saw from your team in terms of ball movement? i tell you what, you're getting better, Mike. I'll tell you what, that's a good question. Um, there's, there's a temptation to settle because South, South Carolina does such a great job of, of, of sinking and stripping and ripping on penetration, <laughs> things like that. Um, we, had a, uh, we, had a, we had a little wrinkle in today that we hadn't run much this year. We'd run a lot last year. And uh, Stephen Pearl and Mike Burgermaster. By the way, Stephen Pearl had an amazing scout, an amazing scout today. He didn't miss on anything. He's had South Carolina, and he was all over it. I mean, we were so prepared. Uh, and then Burgo had a bit of a wrinkle in something that we run all the time that was really effective early getting downhill. And uh, hadn't, run it, hadn't run it yet. Ran it, we ran it last year. And it, it definitely helped us get downhill, So, which then set the tone for not settling. And getting to the rim. Did you want one more? Well, I got right <laughs> okay. yeah, just Go ahead. 
<laughs> BP, Trey and Aiden had five assists, no turnovers. How big was it for them to get off to a good start, especially in the postseason with, with no turnovers between those two guys? Yeah, that's what I was kind of looking as I was looking, kept looking at the stat. No, no turnovers for our point guards. Um, you know, those guys, um, they, they don't get as much credit as what they deserve. Um, you know, look, Aiden Holloway is a dangerous offensive player that's worked really hard to improve on the defensive end, and so that you have to game plan for him. And then Trey's just so super solid, and uh, you could see how well Trey plays with Dylan because he got Dylan in the air on a couple of occasions that those are really good. Those, they've done a nice job of working together. That's why that's Trey is sort of back in with that second group, and Aiden plays a little better with that first group. And so, but, but South Carolina doesn't turn you over. Mississippi State are going to get up in our shorts a lot more. All right, thank you. Thanks.